hope you enjoyed my first lecture. Now, uh, this is my second lecture and again we have some introductory topics which is required to know, uh, know to you all and uh, once you uh, understand plant breeding, uh, why uh, we study plant breeding, what we do in plant breeding, what is the use of this uh, subject in agriculture, once you understand uh, definitely you will enjoy much, you will enjoy much. So, I, my uh, effort is only to uh, you, you develop interest in this subject. Sometimes we are afraid what is in plant breeding, sometimes methods are, so many methods are there. And when we were students, uh, <coughs> we uh, think that what teacher is doing, what is, all methods are almost similar, very confusing. So, uh, don't, it is, uh, I try uh, to solve your problem, what problem I faced uh, as a student, I don't want to repeat it for you. So, uh, in plant breeding, as earlier I said, we improve the characteristics so that our plants become economically superior and uh, economically as well. So, uh, so many activities are there uh, in plant breeding. So, I, I discuss with the objective. What are the objective of a plant breeder? What we have to fulfill? So, our first objective is I earlier said first objective is to get high yield, to get high yield. So how we can get high yields, how we can get high yield? So by developing a uh, high yielding varieties, high yielding varieties or superior varieties, even, even hybrid varieties. By developing high yielding variety, by adopting high yielding varieties by farmers, we can get high yield. And Yield is utmost priority, isn't it? Now the second is improved quality. So once we achieve quantity, I mean yield, then we concentrate over quality. So quality for every crop, every crop different quality characters are there. Suppose in case of uh, uh, what we call wheat, grain size, color, milling and baking quality is important. Likewise, in uh, rice, uh, sometimes uh, uh, cooking quality is uh, more important and in uh, other fruits, size, color of the fruits and flavor is uh, more important and like in, in vegetables also and in legumes crop or cereals, protein is very important, you know. So, uh, we should understand these things and another objective is to develop a disease free variety, disease resistant varieties, you know. So, uh, development of resistant variety is the cheapest method, you know. Sometimes we apply insecticide, pesticide just to uh, reduce the infestation or infection of uh, the disease or insect pest, but the resistant variety is the foolproof method to get rid of diseases and insect pests. Well, change in maturity duration. What will happen if we change the maturity duration? We can take a new crop rotations, you know, new crop rotations we can take. Suppose we can take uh, uh, rice and wheat. Suppose if we allowed to take wheat late planting, then we accommodate in, in uh, wheat and rice in a crop rotations, you know. And by this way, by changing the maturity, we can extend crop area as well, you know, economic characteristics. So dwarfness in cereals is very important. So, you, if, you, if you recollect green revolution, in wheat and rice, two genes were responsible. 
norin 10 in wheat and dgo ugen in rice and that gene dwarfing gene helps to develop so many varieties in india even although it started with the, uh, if you take example of rice it started with the uh, iri philippines ir series we developed by using that dwarf gene only in here ratna and other varieties wheat variety we developed by sonara so so we developed by using uh, norintin dwarfing gene so every time you will be asked that the uh, what were the dwarfing genes in rice in wheat so we should know and you know uh, we will discuss history next time but uh, we should know uh, you should have idea uh, when uh, first ag agriculture university came uh, in the existence in which year and uh, uh, where so uh, you should know the Pandagar uh, uh, University was the first university developed in 1960, you know. So earlier in 1903 or before, uh, five colleges were there. So we'll discuss next time uh, the history. But uh, we are speaking, uh, skipping that history right now. So uh, sometimes uh, that uh, semi dwarf genes help plant breeders or agriculturist to apply more dose of fertilizers because earlier we only give 60 kg nitrogen so if you go beyond 60 kg the plants lost so just to uh, uh, check the lodging uh, we took the semi dwarf varieties and nitrogen application can be increased up to 120 kg per hectare. So, uh, by this way, uh, it helped. So, it become fertilizer responsible. Uh, logging, uh, lodging is not the issues in uh, dwarf, uh, semi dwarf variety. Uh, now, our next ex objective is to develop uh, thermo and photo insensitive varieties. So, uh, this will help to grow our variety around the year, anytime we can grow. Earlier, uh, photo insensitive varieties uh, irrespective of time grow it will uh, flower and fruiting will be, will be there in a certain time when at certain temperature and photo periods and they attain then only it will flower and uh, uh, potting will be there so uh, that helped by developing uh, photo insensitive varieties temperature insensitive varieties so uh, now we can uh, take crop round you, you see, uh, in several examples are there. Earlier in uh, <coughs> Punjab, only you grow wheat. But nowadays, we are taking rice also. If you take the example of West Bengal, earlier only rice we cultivate. But nowadays, we are taking wheat also. Now, the uh, synchronous maturity is very important objective of a breeder. Sometimes, uh, in, in, in case of Moong, several pickings, Several pickings required, but nowadays one to pickings to harvest the moon variety commercially. So, if syn synchronous maturity, I mean mature at the same time, flowering at the same time, almost same time you can say. So, synchronous maturity is a uh, very beneficial for a plant breeder. Uh, lots of laborers and uh, things. Uh, may be saved you know mechanized harvesting can be done if uh, synchronous maturity is there so uh, we uh, faced lots of problem in case of moong well non sattering so again sattering problem is with moong at the time of uh, uh, harvest if uh, before harvest it germinate if rains comes at the time of harvest it germinates so before going to the uh, uh, go down it germinates so the, there is a loss so uh, non sattering type is desirable one and breeder has to take care of this uh, development of non sattering varieties you know so determinate growth is the next next objective in uh, uh, moong pigeon pea and cotton determinate times means Det uh, determinate times means uh, 
they uh, attain maturity at one, one time. You know, indeterminate time means the flowering, fruiting carry on. So, uh, basipedal succession is there. In synchronous maturity or in determinate type, acripetal uh, succession is there. So, uh, flower uh, at the tip and then uh, it helps in uh, uh, I, what we call uh, duration, reduced duration. Short duration variety is now uh, the need of the hour and this uh, uh, determinate type varieties help to flower and fruiting in a uh, very uh, uh, synchronous type or I, I, I can say they flower in a similar time. Uh, so uh, due to this only uh, duration reduces and but it has uh, some limitation also. Suppose in indeterminate type, suppose in PGNP, indeterminate type is there. So it takes uh, one and a half months and two months to flower and um, fruiting. So suppose uh, problem of insect pest or diseases is there, so there, there, there will not be a complete loss, you know, because suppose first flush fail to uh, produce pod, the second flush will come, second flower, third flower will come, second pod will come. So chances to compensate there, but in, in case of determinate type, there is no chance of compensation, right? So this point is very important and dormancy. So uh, it required because seed germinates before harvesting. If rains comes, again the problem I discussed with the, in, in case of moong and barley. So uh, dormancy is there. Dormancy is required. Otherwise, uh, before harvest, uh, it germinates. So it's a, it's a complete loss. So breeder has to work on this objective as well. Moisture stress and salt tolerant, tolerance. So this is again very important. We have, we are uh, working in uh, rain fed areas. We, are, we have to develop varieties which can perform well in moisture stress condition, you know. So acidity is, is a big problem here. So we have to develop varieties for the areas, for the areas, uh, whatever problem is there, we have to uh, take care of that problem and, uh, and start breeding accordingly. So, it uh, problems varies uh, here and there. Uh, it, it, it depends where you are working and accordingly, we take care uh, of uh, uh, all the problems while you are developing a varieties got my point? Any problem? Okay, good. So, uh, sometimes uh, we have to uh, reduce toxic substances. You, you, you remember the lethyrus crops, in our area, Khesari stopped cultivation due to boa content. So, uh, so sometimes uh, due to neurotoxin, this BOA, B O A A stands for beta N oxali amine alanine. This is the full form of BOA, BOA content. So, this due to this uh, toxic substance, earlier we stopped growing Khesari or Lethyrus, but nowadays these things uh, reduced or um, BOA uh, removed from the Khesari, and now uh, commercially we are started cultivation of this lethyrus. You see brassica, you know, brassica is a group of crops, all mustard, rape seeds comes under this. So uh, in brassica, in mustard, erucic acid is the problem. So uh, we have to reduce this erucic acid, then only it is desirable for consumers, so those who consumes it. So and last but not least, that is for new season and uh, we have to work uh, on it also because uh, if you develop varieties for new season earlier you uh, I, I don't know you you know or not uh, earlier uh, only we grow maize in kharif season or rainy season but nowadays uh, ravi season or winter season is the main season for maize you know right and if you take uh, moong, moong traditionally 
it's a kharif crop but now uh, we start uh, growing this in summer also so summer mung is very famous and pau scientists uh, really popularize it and uh, in our state also sml 668 and other varieties we take in uh, in uh, summer uh, season also so summer mung is the best example well so already we discussed this and skipping this slides all right ha huh. well now the activities in plant breeding this is again very important topic activities in plant breeding so few activities are there in plant breeding and i'm just read out creation of variation the first point is creation of variation second is selection third is evaluation fourth is multiplication and last one is distribution so i just discuss with you one by one creation of variation i said for the success in plant breeding we have to develop if variation is already there then all right otherwise we have to create variation and there are several methods for creation of variation natural methods are also there artificial methods are also there so few we have noted down natural one domestication germ plasm collection plant introduction these three comes under natural existing variation you know what is domestication do you know what is domestication bringing of wild varieties under human management is called domestication bringing of wild varieties under human management all varieties are earlier were wild one but nowadays we domesticate it first and then we go for selection and evaluation and everything so the prerequisite is for plant breeder prerequisite is to domesticate it first and then we go for selection very whatever you want to do you can do so other artificial methods are also there man made methods you can say we can artificially create variation by using hybridization you know what is hybridization what is hybridization we select two crops we select two genetically dissimilar plants and make it cross so method is hybridization and uh, we develop hybrids by doing this so by hybridization we take two genetically dissimilar parents and we cross it so definitely there will be a changes the product will be new one because different genes are there in both the parents and once hybridized it will give the variation isn't it so hybridization mutation mutation what is mutation sudden heritable change in the basis of dna isn't it so by mutation mutation is natural as well as artificial sudden heritable change in nature is there but induced mutation is also there chemical and physical mutagens are there so many so by this way we can again get variation you know polyploidy summa clone variation genetic engineering so these are the tools by which we can create variation if in your population from where you starts breeding developing varieties you ask you start doing breeding if variation is there all right otherwise you have to create by these methods if sufficient variation is there definitely you will get success definitely you will have a wonderful varieties in your hand otherwise if all students are similar how you will pick the best one it's very difficult to pick the best one if all are at par all are similar it's very difficult to pick the best one you cannot so there should be differences there should be variation then only we pick the best one isn't it correct okay so once we created the variation we have to go for selection we have to identify that what 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 characters are good what can give better yield so we go for selection you know you know we go for selection and 
we we select the best one and we leave the undesirable one we, we in other words we can say that we reject the undesirable one and we select the desirable one so that is called selection so so picking of the desirable one is called selection rejection is also called comes under selection so plant breeders don't carry all population or all undesirable populations it, it it will be difficult to maintain the population in later generation you know so discard is also a very important step in plant breeding undesirable one will be discarded desirable one will be promoted to the next generation we carry to the next generation which is desirable one so our eyes should be very good breeders eyes should be very good and those people who are very experienced they give very good salary in even private sectors any plant breeder are in public sector all right but sometimes they get a very good breeder if i am a very good breeder private sector will give uh, give us very good uh, money to work for his uh, uh, multinational companies seed companies suppose i developed one variety they will get crores and crores if you develop a one uh, good variety so they can get so importance of breeder plant breeder is much much and uh, we should have the idea we should know the all activities in plant breeding so first one is creation of variation second one is selection and then evaluation so suppose we have 15 varieties all varieties cannot be promoted so we have to we have to evaluate it so certain designs are there experimental methods are there in that method we have to follow field experimentation principles i discussed with earlier class randomization replication local control so we follow it accordingly we place all the 15 varieties and we take the data of all characters we take average and those varieties we perform good over the check varieties so we select those and we what we do at one location test suppose we tested in rachi again we have to test it into other zonal research station we have birsa agriculture university have three zonal research stations that is in dumka chiyaki and darisai darisai near jamshedpur so we also test first year we tested in our location rachi next year we test it to all three locations so just to know the stable variety i discussed in definition so stability is very important so variety should have perform similar in all the locations suppose i developed a variety for jharkhand so it should perform good in each and every districts that's why we test for different locations you know <coughs> sorry so it 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 test uh, test requires for different location different years so sometimes suppose we are searching for uh, resistant varieties screening for resistant varieties sometimes moisture is not there sufficient rainfall is not there disease infestation not appeared so we, we cannot say that uh, suppose disease escaped we cannot say this is the resistant variety this is so repeatedly we go for testing 2 years 3 years 4 years sometimes the sometimes if you heard in pathology u triangle uh, sorry u triangle uh, disease triangle so host pathogen and environment three factors are there so if susceptible host is there if environment is favorable and uh, pathogen is virulent state then only disease will appear you know otherwise Uh, suppose the environment is not favorable one pathogen is avirulent so so we will not get the disease and uh, that screening will not full proof we cannot say suppose planting time we changed so disease may escape so it requires repeated testing 2 years 3 years and when uh, uh, favorable environments appeared for a breeder 
then we real uh, evolution uh, may be done. So, uh, by this way we go for selection and we should have idea of all subjects, but sometimes uh, earlier uh, there is no uh, all India uh, coordinated research projects were there, but uh, nowadays for every crop suppose I am looking after PGNP, I am a PI, principal investigator of uh, this project, so uh, pathologist, entomologist, agronomist assist me in, in that uh, uh, crop because all crops are crop improvement projects, so uh, everyone has role. So other scientists of different disciplines assist me uh, in breeding of uh, disease resistance, insect resistance, high yielding varieties. So agronomists also help. So by this way, uh, that's why uh, uh, All India uh, Coordinated Research Project is there, AICRP. AICRP, All India Coordinated Research Project is there and that helps at a national level. So in developing a, a variety by the help of a group of scientists, they work together and give a very good yield. And after evaluation, the next step is multiplication. Once you identified the variety, after evaluation we, we identified, then it has to be released it has to be released, it has to be notified, released for the farmers. Farmers can cultivate it now. So it, it will go to the government of India for notification and after notification multiplication will be done. Seeds multiple, multiple, multiplication means large scale seed production. So if, if it is uh, large seed is required after release of the varieties, demand will be much, if variety is very good, uh, demand will come from every corner and we have to meet it out. So and uh, last stage is distribution. So all are interrelated, all activities are very important and we fail at any juncture. So all uh, system will collapse. So all steps, all activities are equally important, we have to take care of all the activities. So uh, sometimes in plant breeding undesirable effects comes, although we achieve lot, but sometimes genetic erosion is there. So nowadays we are concentrating over holding varieties, uh, wild relatives and land races. Uh, we are not uh, considering and uh, old varieties have, uh, have some merits. They have disease resistance source, they have insect resistance source. Uh, but nowadays we are concentrating, concentrating on holding varieties and that's why uh, and, and we are leaving it. Old varieties we are not maintaining it, we are leaving it so there is a genetic erosion. So what is the solution? We have to maintain, we have to collect the germ plasm, we have to maintain it. At national level, NBPG are doing this, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, NBPG are at New Delhi doing this. They are maintaining all land races, all germ plasms at national level, okay. So narrow genetic base. Again, there is a problem, Gen genetic vulnerability and pest disease appears. How, how, how it appears? genetic base should be broadened. That's why we always say that we have to, we have to cross our holding variety with wild varieties. We have to cross it because in case of self pollinated crops, pure line is there. In case of hybrids, in case of cross pollinated crops, hybrids are there. So both are homogeneous, you know. So we required heterogeneous, different combination of genes we required. We should have a broad genetic base. Genetic base will be broadened, then there is chances to get a success. That's why there is a new concept, pre-breeding is there. Before the start of breeding, we go for, we allow all genes, all plants, we grow together and allow it to pollinate here and there with each and every one. And that population will be having a broad genetic base. So there is 
uh, abroad based then chance to get success. If you pick any genotype, any entry from that population, definitely that will give you a wonderful variety in future. Otherwise, uh, there is a problem. So, minor disease and, disease and pests, sometimes we concentrate over major uh, disease and pests, we, we ignore the minor, sometimes uh, they create problems. So, uh, sometimes undesirable things appeared in the past and that should not be repeated in future, we have to take care of. Attainment of yield plateau, no more further increase, that is again a problem. After, not our state but few states using a, uh, lots of fertilizers, uh, insecticide, pesticides and this is not good for uh, future agriculture. We always talk for sustainable agriculture, we have to leave our soils for our children, next generations. And suppose due to uh, plateau, because, because we are using same varieties as a one of the parents. Suppose hiding varieties or hybrids we are using as a parents, and, and that's why uh, sometimes we don't uh, much uh, don't get uh, much genetic gain. So we have to take a dissimilar parents in crossing also, we have to go for uh, uh, other, other uh, wild varieties in our crossing program so that uh, we get, uh, we, we cross the ill plateau, we break the ill level because whatever management practices required, uh, we have done. So it's very difficult to enhance the ill but we have to feed our population, so we have to increase the yield and we have to follow all, all factors which, is, which can help us to get a high production, high productivity. We have to follow it because area is shrinking. We, we don't go for horizontal growth, you know. So vertical growth can be achieved that is uh, very little, you know. So we have to concentrate over hybrid and hiding variety. We have to do all uh, management practices very nicely. Uh, we have to follow crop rotation. We have to uh, uh, follow the new areas, new crops in can be grown in new areas. So lots of things uh, is required. And uh, lastly, uh, for breaking yield plateau, we have to we have to go for pre-breeding. We have to develop a population having a broad genetic base. Then only we can do this. So so many contributions contributions came. So many. Uh, so now we'll uh, this topics we'll discuss in uh, next uh, topic when we'll uh, meet. So. Uh, you prepare these two, uh, my lectures, very uh, nicely. You prepare notes if you don't understand. Because, because the basic things I discussed, not, uh, there is no science involved. You, you, you heard these all, uh, my words uh, earlier also. So, uh, uh, thank you very much for patient hearing. Uh, and uh, if you have any problem, uh, you can discuss with me. Uh, your uh, class representative can talk to me and uh, in, uh, in future we'll meet time to time and we'll try to uh, cover your all syllabus and other two teachers again uh, they will also come to meet you. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all.